Welcome to the Concealer Chronicles, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining this evening. It is a Wednesday night, and it is a lovely day here in Denver, Colorado. Happy to be with you. My name is Rachel Moore. I am your host, the hostess. I hope I have the mostest. I don't know if I do, but I try. I show up every Wednesday and bring you guys just authentic stories about the Concealer Chronicles. Uh, the Concealer Chronicles, in a nutshell, is essentially uh, it's the stories about women. Um, it really is a show focused on women. Now, as a woman, I feel like I'm a good authority to actually do this show. So I just want to put that out there. Uh, just f fully, uh, full disclosure here. Uh, I'm a woman. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I have a cat. Uh, I have a couple jobs. Um, and I am based out of Denver, Colorado. And I just a real brief intro on this is that um, we've all seen people do the hustle and we all have the, we can get the circles under our eyes and get really tired. And I kind of got tired of hiding that fact that we were all trying to just maintain, succeed and pretend like everything was just hunky dory. And sometimes it's not, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes this life we lead, particularly as women is really challenging, particularly because we're in charge of just about everything. Okay. And, we're in charge of so many things. Now, I'm in charge of different things than you might be, or my guest is, is tonight, or any of the guests we've had on the Concealer Chronicles, or anyone who identifies as a woman. We all have our challenges, and we always rise above and, and succeed with them. So this show is about glorifying that and pointing it out and being real about the life we lead. And so, again, I welcome you to the Concealer Chronicles. Uh, it is uh, a joy to share with you. It's also from my Instagram account and I uh, love having it here. Um, if you want to follow our website, it's concealerchronicles.com. Um, and I am, as again, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to rise above and succeed at all these challenges. It's growing. It's a growing community and I'm really excited about that. And that's why I'm excited about tonight's guest. Um, one reason I'm really excited about it is because, uh, the video you just saw at the open, uh, features our guest a couple times at least. And it's really cool. Um, so, uh, it, it, it's been great, you know, just living here in Denver. And one thing I really enjoy is networking with people. But it can be a big challenge to try to do that sometimes. It can be hard to kind of build your own community or try to find people who want to be in your community. Um, and women, as you know, we do get stuff done. We're totally the boss, but sometimes it's hard to find the women that you connect with in your life. And so uh, with that, I would really love to bring in tonight's guest. And she's amazing. She is a fellow Denverite. Uh, and I'm so pleased to bring on another woman in charge and another uh, guest on the Concealer Chronicles. Crystal Covington is here on the show. Thank you so much, Crystal, for joining us this evening. Hey, glad to be here. This is fun. This is my second live ever. <laughs> really? It's the second one? What was your first one? My first one was another show actually using a different platform and I was just a deer in the headlights but now I'm like I got this I'm cool I know, We're great. Right? you got it you're at ease and and I have to say now Crystal you uh, you're not someone who's a stranger to the spotlight you uh you tend to be you're able to be on stages you're in front of cameras I know live streaming feels a bit different too because it is just this different no. entity but um, but I, I I was really keen to talk to you too because I know I'm an extrovert, and from what I know of you is you're not necessarily an extrovert. I would love if you kind of share um, with us how you kind of manage being in the spotlight when you might not necessarily be like Miss Woo. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not Miss Woo. <laughs> so the funny, <laughs> funny thing is like. So I have really evolved to have a little bit of a different show personality than I used to have. So when I was younger, me and my husband, my husband's like the extrovert of all time. When we met, it was like, people would be like, there's Benny. And then, oh, and Crystal too. Nice to have you. Because I didn't offer a lot as far as energy went. Like I would only open up when it was just me and one other person. Right. So I had to... I literally, you know, studied influence and charisma and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff in order to give myself the tools I needed to be able to come off as a charismatic human being that people want to know. Yeah. Even though my natural personality is just kind of like, oh, 
I could just chill. I'm just super chill. I don't want to talk a lot. I could like watch mm-hmm. Netflix all day long and be fine. Mm-hmm. Once in a while coming out to see human beings. Um, yeah. But I realized that's not an adaptive trait in the business world. <laughs> so I needed to change in order to succeed. And so yeah. here I am now. Well, and can you share with us a little bit about your background about, um, I, I believe you got some broadcasting, um, some experience in there and, and what really prompted you to know that you needed to, you know, as your career went along, that you needed to develop that charisma and kind of be ready to, to handle and accommodate all those networking conversations and things like that. Well, the first big kick in the pants was I had a job as a recruiter and mm. it re- it required pounding the phone and really having lots of conversations with people. I was fired from that job and <laughs> rightfully so I could not handle, I went home literally every day crying because Aww. they wanted me to make more phone calls. Like they would tell me you made 60 calls today. Do you know what your teammate did? And I'm like, I don't, I can't even imagine how he talked to more than 60 people in one day. Right. <laughs> That's so overwhelming. Yes. And so it was, it was killing me inside. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was fired from that. Then I ended up getting more sales and marketing jobs. Everything I got was requiring me to get in front of people. I was a promotional model. So I had to go to bars and um, talk to people and get them to drink new, uh, new drinks and stuff. Yeah. And the one that, you know, was the real career definer was I worked for a, development company and they needed me to help, you know, really, I mean, they needed me to get the properties filled because these are big apartment complexes and they need people to fill them up. So I had mm-hmm. to build relationships, talk, sell people into wanting to live there and help lease it. Um, and then I also had to help with stuff like doing presentations and um, mingling with politicians and stuff like that wow. in order to help us to get the funding we needed. So I yeah. had to really boss up. And when I wasn't at first, you know, my boss would send me to a event and say, you know, like it was a politician's fundraiser or something. And he would say, I can't go. I need you to go to this. And I need you to give this politician this message. And I'd be like, okay. And so I would go, I'm like, okay, I'm going to meet this politician. I'm going to give him the message I'm supposed to give. And then I would do that. And then I would sit and eat for the rest of the event. <laughs> and then he would ask me the next day, He's like, okay, who did you meet? I'm like, I met the politician you told me to. I gave him the money and I and and I, I told him what you told me to say. And he's like, okay, well, who else did you meet? I'm like, who else was I supposed to meet? I did what I was saying. <laughs> You're like, I didn't that was, was that in the fine print of your instructions? I didn't quite get that. Right. So then I realized, okay, there's more to this expectation. So I've been getting pushed into sales and marketing my entire career. And finally, I just realized I needed to learn it. And then, Mm -hmm. so I started off by asking my husband, pointing this way, like he's right there. You know, I asked my (laughs) husband, help me figure this out because you're so charismatic. And he's like teaching me how to shake hands. Like here, this is how you do this. And um, (laughs) telling me, you know, when I would go to a networking event, what I did wrong which is kind of sad because then I felt bad. I would be mad at him. And he's like, you asked me to give you feedback. <laughs> <laughs> That's so well, stereotypical to too. Like, how do I look in this dress? It's like, well, don't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, how did you, now I, I'm interested to hear this too, because obviously at some point you could have just said, forget this stuff, forget these types of roles. I'm going to go find something that I don't have to do all that stuff with. Um, yeah. Can you talk, what, why, why did you decide to keep pursuing it and really kind of having to gut through, kind of not feeling natural with that stuff, but instead of saying, oh yeah, I'm just going to go, I'll go find a cubicle job. I won't have to talk to anybody. I tried. I actually <laughs> was trying, even at this same company. So I worked there for almost five years mm-hmm. in different, you know, doing different things. But I actually tried doing things like I'm going to work under the attorney. And then I was like, I don't like this because he's hard on me. And all these documents, my eyes were getting crazy. I couldn't deal with it. And if I didn't understand something, he'd be like, just reread it. And I'm like, really? So I didn't like working with the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Um, He was my friend, though, but I didn't like him as a boss. And then I tried doing things like working under the CFO. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be a money person. So I started doing the asking if I can help with financial documents or like 
closing documents where they were like, um, you know, they had a lot of real estate closing documents. So you have to put down like, what are all mm -hmm. the properties the company owns? You know, what is the calculation of the assets and all this stuff? So I would do those things and do all the documents for the tax credit and grants and stuff. And I'm like, I do this. I put in for grants. <laughs> I get the funding. And every time I'd get a check, I'd be like, see, I'm this person now. And then they'd be like, okay, we'll go sell this property. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, no. okay. you're like, okay. <laughs> So I kept getting assigned to, you know, hosting events because I was good at it. I kept mm -hmm. getting assigned to doing leasing parties and stuff. And then I just yeah. finally said, you know what, you know, filling out these tax documents and financial documents is really not as fun. I just need to boss up and do what I'm meant to do. And clearly you can still be a super introvert. Like I test off mm -hmm. the charts. Yeah. I get physically sick when I network too much it hurts me physically. I lose energy and I get sick and then I end up in the bed for a week if I overdo it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but for some reason, it's what, it's what life wanted for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you, I love that you point, put it that way. That's what life wanted for you because you, you can be as intentional as you want about choices that you make, but um, you know, in the path that you want to take, but sometimes you're just going to get kind of navigated for yourself where it's like, okay, I'm just going to follow the natural flow that seems to be happening here. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to ask you too. So this will kind of get us into uh, your current role today, but um, you know, being an introvert uh, and, and I will say I've been an introvert in my past. I haven't always been an extrovert. And I remember, I do recall it being very difficult to try to develop friendships and uh that network and that community, whether it's friends or business or whatever. But um, uh, can you talk about what evolved for you to say, well, I'm looking for something and weren't really finding it and, and what you did, what you did then? Yeah. So, you know, being an introvert doesn't mean that I don't need a network, just mm -hmm. people that I can call on and trust. And so I had been here. So my husband and I, we were in, we lived in the Detroit area. Mm -hmm. And we had all our people from where we grew up. You know, we had our childhood friends, our family members. I had my sisters who had become my my people. You know, we spent, yeah. would come and visit. I had my nieces and I love them so much. And um, But we needed to make a change. Economically, the Detroit area just wasn't doing what we needed it to do for us <laughs> career-wise. <laughs> yeah. So we left right before the city went through all the bankruptcy stuff. So we needed to move somewhere better and and Denver had it, you know, had the economic stuff. It was like all all the lists for like best places for millennials, best places, yeah. to business, best places for careers. So we're like, okay, we need to go here. Mm -hmm. But I came here, you know, I came here without a job and we landed, we succeeded. You know, I got myself a really great job. I was successful. I felt like I was Mary Tyler Moore, who was my dream. Uh, <laughs> that was my definition of life success was to be Mary Tyler Moore. And um, I had achieved it, but I was going to work and I would try my best to try to make friends. I would ask people, hey, you want to go for coffee after work? Or and they're like, no, I got kids. I'm going home. Mm. And I could not find um, anyone who really just wanted to be my friend. Like it was sad yeah. for the yeah. days I would just like, like I remember wearing a red dress and like hanging out in the, uh, what do you call the little coffee room, you know, the lunch room or whatever. Yeah. The lounge. And, yeah. I started conversations. People would be like, Oh, you, you know, they noticed me. They're like, Oh, you're wearing red. I'm like, yes, that was what I wanted, <laughs> but it didn't last. Mm -hmm. So, um, Eventually, I realized, okay, I need to try something new. So I started going to networking events, and I still wasn't good at networking. It's still not comfortable. It's awkward. I ended up with, like, the people that approach me the most are salespeople because they see I'm an easy target. And I'm like, yes, of yeah. course I'll have coffee with you. And then they're trying to sell me stuff, mm -hmm. and I don't need it. Sometimes I was buying it just to try to make a friend, and it didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> right? Eventually, I whined enough to my husband about not being able to successfully make friends at these networking events that he's like, aren't you an event planner? Go make your own events and bring the people that you want them to, that you want to meet. And I'm like, OK. So I had put something up on Eventbrite. Um, it was called The Stories We Tell Ourselves. And it mm -hmm. was a little workshop about um, the limiting beliefs that we have. 
Mm. And so I just posted it on Eventbrite and hoped people came. And I had five people in a room and we all just sat and discussed things. And I had been trained to facilitate conversations. So we had a little facilitated conversation about it. I was just so joyful that people showed up and my dad and my husband were there. It was so cute. And that Aww. was the start of Women of Denver, this desperate young woman trying to build oh. her own network. <laughs> oh and my God. Me. I love that. I, well, and it's, I, I love that you're so, you're so, uh, you know, full disclosure where it was desperation. you you obviously were trying. I love the fact that you were, uh, you had a red dress on and we're trying to like say, okay, it's like, it's just like marketing. It's exactly like that where you're like, let me get your eyeballs. And then I'm going to kind of, you know, we'll work through the pitch and why you need to hang out with me. And yeah. <laughs> I love that you did that. And and I could see you doing that too. Cause you do, by the way, you have an impeccable wardrobe. I love, I love the things that you, the way that you you put yourself out there, but you just, I just love that you even strategize right down to like, okay, I need to wear a bright, vibrant color. I need a position <laughs> here and, and they're going to come and then I will, I'll engage. Um, but and again, with marketing, you know, it's hit or miss. Sometimes you, you yeah. have that whole strategy and it's not received. And they're like, that was neat and move on. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I have to give you props, too, because being someone who, you know, in the particularly in the business space, we all want people to show up to things. We all want them to come to our things. And um, you do such a great job with uh, getting people to your stuff. Um, I love that you... Uh, because I, I think the last time, and by the way, I'm just going to, let me just go in solo shot here, guys. So I'm just going to show you guys. I'm actually wearing a Women of Denver shirt. Hold on. Let me see. Women of Denver. I'm a badass woman of Denver. That's right. So I wanted to, and Crystal was very nice and actually sent that to me because uh, the last event I was at, and I've been to a few of your events, um, uh, I saw those shirts sitting out and I was like, oh. That's the one I want. That's the totally. That's that's so me. And and I showed that to you. I think in a. I think I was doing a Periscope that night. Yeah. At your event, and and I gotta say, see, you had about I I and I'm terrible at head counts. I would say what seventy five to hundred women at that one. The one that I was at, it was like a couple quarterly networking parties ago. Yeah, that's about the number we get. Yeah, and so to that, it's so impressive that you you're you do if you build it, they do come. Um, you you get that event going you obviously know your skills within a, with event planning and you created something that people came to can i can i ask how many people came to the very first one of those that you did on eventbrite the first one the first event that i ever did there yeah. was five okay the first <laughs> quarterly party there was 20 people <laughs> wow that's amazing and how long ago how long have you been doing those the quarterly networking parties I think the first one was December 2015. Wow. That was, that's so interesting. Um, I actually, God, that's, I, I remember I had just jumped ship from my last corporate job and had just started my business. So that's right around the time that you got that going. Um, and, you know, there's nothing like when you're trying to build a business, you want to find those networking uh, venues and forums where, you don't, you don't want to be the grabby salesperson, but you do want to cultivate those relationships and get them going. Uh, so I know from as a woman in Denver who tries to have some business acumen, it was amazing to have such a good, a focused uh, group to do that with. And um, I, I, how are you feeling about it? Do you really like where it's gone and how it's grown and, and what, it's, what's it, what it's becoming in Denver? I think the most amazing thing is when people repeat back to me my philosophy, you know, mm. I have a lot of philosophies. And when I first started it, I was really stringent about telling people what we believe, what I believe in. I'm like, this is what Women of Denver is about. We're not salesy. So don't yep. come here and be salesy. We want people who are, you know, here to be focused on authentic long term relationships. And I would keep repeating that stuff. And now people say it back to me. And it makes me so proud to know that people know the culture mm. and the expectations. Even when people do things like teach workshops, I've heard them, um, they'll say, well, Crystal will be proud of me because I created some great activities because they know mm -hmm. I want the activities, you know, to be a big part of the event because it's like, yes, we're coming to learn from you. Mm -hmm. We're coming to get the material. But yeah. what's most important is we're there to connect. 
So if you're not getting an experience, it's like, okay, great. I learned a little something, but it wasn't worth my two hours. Yeah. You know, I want people to feel like I learned something and I felt super connected to something that was bigger than myself. People that are, um, you know, that really want to be a part of my life and that can yeah. really help and support me. I want that to be the feeling. And so I think that it's really come through for people mm -hmm. and that means something. We just launched yeah. this week and there's a load of people that just want to help support and grow yeah. the community and make it even better. And that just means so much to me. I mean, I almost cried when I saw, cause I wasn't sure if people were going to sign up or not. Right. Um, right. Like, well, people want to join a committee for women in Denver. And so I put it out there and then I had put a, like a certain number of slots and people were adding slots. I'm like, wow. That's so neat. Yeah. That means it's really important to them mm -hmm. and they want to help cultivate it. Yeah. So it's well, bigger than you. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I've noticed, like I did get the opportunity, which was amazing. I really loved being uh, able to be on a panel at one of your, uh, one of the networking parties and I did met such amazing people, Tracy Revel, um, Helene Kwong, um, and, and a few other people that, that I've even seen grow uh, into these events too. But you really do, it, it, you can go to any event now and like, yes, let's sit and watch some panels. And those three people are obviously very important, but you require more of that from the people that you feature at your, your events where you, you're like, no, you're going to go connect with the people in the audience. You're going to actually make them get up and do something. Thing, yeah. have some action but you really you foster that networking you you kind of require it which I love and honestly when when you think about that I think that you do create this wonderful forum for fellow introverts to say this is scary and it's okay you're in it's a comfortable place you will just everybody's gonna have to do it and it's not like you're the only one that's gonna have to like come out of your comfort zone and move around so it really does meet extrovert and introvert and everyone in between from my perspective. So uh, I think it's amazing that what you've done with, uh, with women of Denver. Yeah. You mentioned the right thing. So basically I did that stuff because being an introvert myself, I need activities to help me meet people. Otherwise it's mm -hmm. like walking up to strangers and starting an awkward conversation. Yeah. It's just not my thing. So if you give me something to do that can get me to talk to them, then it's an opener and it helps to make it easier. Yeah. Well, and then you, I don't know how you get such amazing food at these events. Uh, and I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about that, but the, about the different entities that partner up with you to, to help make these, they're just not, they're not just like, Hey, show up and sit in a folding chair for two hours. Um, you really do make it an experience where there's, there's food, there's, there's professional resources. Um, and in addition to the power players that are women of business in that room, um, how do you, you know, can you want to talk about your partnerships in the community and in, 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 uh, in Denver and how they kind of help bring these uh, events into a larger scale, I would say? Yeah, I mean, we have tons of partners. It really helps us out, you know, just because running events is actually one of the most expensive things. And people mm -hmm. don't realize, they go, what do you spend? It must be a cheap business. I'm like, oh, nope. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> But what it is, is, you know, people come to us and say, you have this mission that we align with and we want to support you. So there's venues that help us out and give us access to space that would cost hundreds of dollars. Um, there's people who, you know, have like the Gluten Free Explorer, you know, they've been one of our partners for a long time. Um, all the past year, maybe a year and a half, you know, we've worked with them to be able to offer really delicious. I mean, they're so good. They're, mm -hmm. they're the bread I buy, but they offer us really great um, appetizers at our events at, for the quarterly parties. Not all of our events have food. Um, but, you know, and then there's people just in the community that are just um, wanting to support. So people that are mm -hmm. part of Women of Denver, some of our members will say, hey, I have this to offer. You know, how can I support? Where can I, get, you know, give this to this group or, you know, work with you on a lower price or whatever it is. So there's a lot of different right. people support what we're here for and want to make it as easy as possible for us to continue and be successful. Right. And I actually want to correct myself too. Um, I was putting in, I was putting the wrong URL. It's correct. The, the women of Denver.com is where to find information about you guys. Um, and I'll make sure I pin that too to the top of the comments because it really, I think you've created something and I, I, 
I've lived in a few other cities, but as an adult, primarily Denver's been my 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 uh, my area. I love it. Um, but you've really created something that hopefully that you hope every other city, whether it's small or big, has something similar that people can take advantage of to say yes. And and you do you make it pretty darn affordable. I mean, gosh, you look at a chamber of commerce. Um, I think I was looking at the uh, South Metro one for Denver, and it's like six hundred dollars a year for a minimum. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry for my reaction. <laughs> you're like, whoa. Um, to, to go, and then you're you're usually paying extra to go to some of the events, and um, and I, you know, as a business person, as a woman who's trying to make foster networking, you are looking at every dime. You're like, well, what can I do? What can I get to? And and honestly, your 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 group, your events, uh, the networking of the women of Denver is such a lot of bang for your buck. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk briefly. I mean, we're almost to the end of our half hour, believe it or not. But um, if you want to talk briefly about how to get involved, if you are in Denver and, and want to check this group out. Yeah. So if you're interested in, you know, being part of Women of Denver, you can go to joinwod.com or the link right here and just click the join and you can join for free, you know, just join as a uh, pay as you go member so you can kind of see what events are coming up or you can choose a membership as an impact member but we try to keep it you know once people join the impact membership which is like the main one mm -hmm. you don't have to pay extra for stuff i think my biggest pet peeve is like paying 400 dollars for a membership which i have done and mm -hmm. then still having to pay 40 dollars when i go to the event yeah. and i'm like where is this going you know? <laughs> exactly you're like yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm well, and it's like when you are going to meet, you know, I'm going to hand the guy the money. I'm going to say hi to him and then I'm going to go eat um, yeah. you. That's worth a certain amount of money. You're like, well, if I'm going to an event for two hours, time is money. And so it's like I want to make sure I'm getting all the things I can out of it. And you really make sure we do, which is awesome. Yes, that's yeah. great. Thank you a lot for giving giving me the chance to really share a little bit about Women of Denver. It's just it's my heart. It really it's is. A, it's amazing. And, you know, and, and Crystal, I'll just say it's reflected in that you, I think that I know I can tend to be a, a bit flash in the pan. Like I'll get up there and be like, I'm almost like a game show host. Like, wow, we're here to have, wow, everything's going to happen. But having seen you at your events, you, the poise you have, you're, you're such a good balance of excitement, but also gravity where you're like, no, we're here to actually do something serious. You know, we're here to get the most out of this. We are going to have fun, but it's not going to be like this really big high. And then you're all disappointed. It's, you're not going to have buyer's remorse. Basically, you really do give a wonderful balance to it to say, here's what you can expect. You totally get what you expect. And even beyond that, you're like, I can't wait for the next one. So I just wanted to let you know, I think you do exceptional with that. And it's it's a wonderful thing. And I it's very apparent at the events. So. Thanks. And I'm glad you're rocking the t-shirt. Yes. Let me, you know, guys, I got to show you again. So here we go. I'm going to put solo up here. Let's see. And I might have to move my microphone a little bit. Women of Denver. Woo! <laughs> that's right. See, like I said, flash in the pan. That's, that's how I roll. I get really excited mm -hmm. about stuff, but um, well, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, and you know, it's, it's the middle of the week and uh, <laughs> time flies. When is your next, uh, I think you're, do you have a networking party coming up soon? I think the next women of Denver quarterly networking party is December 2nd from five to eight at the gallery at Asbury event center. Very nice. Very nice. And that's, is that in the Cherry Creek? Is that Cherry Creek, that area? <laughs> Considered the Highlands. Okay, that's right. That's right. I, I was like trying to remember. I know we've been to a couple different events, which again, you do have fabulous places that like that uh, partner with you to put these on. So it's it's always a great time. So I will uh, I will hopefully be seeing you in person at that uh, on December second, which will be amazing. But thank you so much again for uh, spending some time with us this evening to share about your passion and your heart uh, in the Women of Denver, which is an amazing community to be a part of. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. And thank you all again for watching with the Concealer Chronicles, whether you watch live or you're watching the replay. Um, this is what we do every Wednesday. We have a different woman on and it's always a woman or someone who identifies as a woman. And we're trying to make sure we feature women in charge. And Crystal Covington is the founder of the women of Denver.com. And uh, I will, I know I shared the 
almost correct link. Fortunately, Women of Denver, oh, by the way, Crystal is going to mention to you if you're still listening, womenofdenver.com looks like it's available. I, I think so anyway, but uh, the women of Denver.com is where you want to go uh, and go check that out. I really do dig it. And, you know, finding the community for women for ourselves is really important, even if it's a community of one or two or 500 or whatever you need. Uh, it's really important to get out there. So if you're watching this and you identified with it or you have your own cool group that you uh, are partake of, tag them, tag your friends, uh, share it with your friends, share it in your groups uh, and get inspired to to develop your own community in that way. And I just really appreciate everybody showing up this evening and being part of it. And Crystal, again, thank you. I, I see you. See, this is what's so great because I can actually show my guests comment on the screen, even though the interview's over. It's awesome. So thank you so much. And um, I feel pretty honored that I was her second live stream. That's so cool. Pretty soon she's going to be doing like 50 or 100 and all these things because live streaming is the way to go, people. Uh, but thank you all for watching. We'll be back next Wednesday. Oh, guess what next Wednesday is? It's the No Makeup Meetup. Uh, so next Wednesday, no makeup. Now, I don't look like I have a ton of makeup on right now. Anyway, I do. Um, but you'll tell. The difference between this and next week is going to be, woo! Uh, but we do the last Wednesday of every month is the No Makeup Meetup. Uh, because as I mentioned, it's the Concealer Chronicles. We don't always want to just be like, I must hide all the shades and the wrinkles and the stress. Uh-uh. Sometimes we just need to come clean, and that's what I'm going to do next week. Um, I may have a guest on next week, uh, which will also be Sans Makeup. It's a bold move, guys. Not everybody feels okay about that, about going on a live stream or anything with a camera without makeup. I do. It's fine, because this is the real me. The real me will be back next Wednesday. Um, I'm excited to watch my Instagram, too. I'll be in Baltimore, Maryland for the next few days, I'm going to the Market Simple, the summit, uh, hosted by Sharon Washington, who's amazing. I, I had her, she was actually our guest, one of our guests on last week, along with Erin Sell, uh, because she's a conference organizer. And I cannot wait. Um, I cannot wait. That woman has created, an, again, these women who are creating these experiences for other women. It's amazing. It's amazing. But I'm going to be there. I'm also going to be hanging out with my friend Tanya, uh, who lives in Washington, D.C. And so watch my Instagram. It's at Rachel Moore RS. The RS stands for really social. Rachel Moore RS. And you'll see it, too. It's the Concealer Chronicles on Instagram. OK, talk to you guys next week for the No Makeup Meetup. And until then, have a non-concealed experience for the next week. Let it all hang out. Just be real about what you're doing. And you are a woman in charge. See you then.